Today we will discuss the topic of web application architecture. Mm -hmm. um, this is a topic that could be part of a several different courses, so we will not name any courses specifically no, today. That, that's not a small thing to do, I think. Uh, and by now you're probably a bit familiar with Node.js as an application platform. Uh, and kind of know a little bit about HTTP as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and in today's lecture, we will look, start our journey of, of coding server-based web applications, basically. Uh, we will, I mean, we, we have named this lecture web application architecture for a reason. Uh, we will, as you will see later on, use a framework called Express. Uh, however, the reason why we're doing that will be obvious to, to help us come further. However, this course is not about learning Express or any other framework. It's, it's about understanding how to create server-based web applications in a, in, a, in a pretty good way, at least. I, I think so. Yeah. Um, but it's not a specific, specific for just Express, it's a, it's a, you can use any kind of, of framework, framework as we come, come to see. Yeah, we can actually go to the first slide. So, so in this format we will, uh, we will not code too much today. Nope. The, uh, this lecture will be a, 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 a have a demo uh, closely connected to it as well, so, so that you can like see a demo where we code the structure mm -hmm. from the beginning to the end of a simple web application. Uh, so, what is web application architecture? Uh, basically, I mean, as, as we will see, we, we can create applications really simple uh, uh, in, 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 in the web server. However, when, when, as web applications do, when the application grows, mm. uh, we cannot just have some ugly fixes and, and uh, things like that. We need to kind of have a strategy of how yeah. to to create the applications. And, and we will, in this course, we will give you one way of, of creating mm. those applications. One way that I at least think is is will work in not just Express, will be kind of the same in other frameworks. You are the framework guy in this. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, you, you, you have experience with like Ruby, C Sharp, .net, well, uh, ASP.NET, yes. Mm -hmm. PHP. Yeah, Symfony. Uh, Symfony, yeah. yeah. I, I have some experience, but not to, to, to your extent, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and you have pretty much set up this lecture so that uh, it should be, we should be able to do what we do in this this lecture in many different frameworks without yes. too much effort. Well, so if you're familiar with, with for example, ASP.NET, uh, you will recognize many things, I think. Yeah. And .NET is Microsoft's server-based language mm. connected to the IAS web server. Um, server-based, it, it's their platform, yeah. I would say. And I think that, I think you mentioned this before, but ASP.NET is kind of uh, uh, inspired by Ruby and Rails. Well, definitely. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, 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 I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing new. It's, it's, it's just the same things all over again. Uh, okay, so when, when you take this course, you've probably been coding web applications for the client, uh, client web, uh, client web applications. Uh, but now we're starting to, to, to code server-based applications as well, because to be able to create many of, of the types of applications we need, we need both the server and the client. Um, and the server is, is pretty s straightforward, actually, because a server, the only thing that the server does is to, 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 to get a request and send a response mm. back. However, what happens in between the request and response could be quite, uh, many things could happen. Different servers can, can be involved, uh, databases, uh, 
uh, file systems, mm -hmm. a lot of things can happen. You could contact other APIs to get data, but uh, uh, a web server is pretty simple in its purest form. Then the web server will be able to, to handle other uh, 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 protocols as well. We have WebSocket, mm. for instance, that we will look look on later in the uh, in the course. Uh, I mean, yeah, we have the stack down here, or pretty much what what I, I mean when we are on the client side, uh, JavaScript is essential because yes. we are mm. on the hostile side of of <laughs> of, of, of everything. We are. At the the user's browser, and that browser can be constructed in many different ways. We have different vendors. Uh, our code need to, to comply to all of those vendors' mm. uh, uh, specifications, and and that's why we have quite a good standardization uh, about JavaScript, HTML, and CSS today. It hasn't always been like that. However, on the server, it's a little bit easier for us developers because. Yeah. We, we can con control the environment. Yes, we can choose what language to use, for example. Yep. Uh, could be complicated in that we, we, we often, if, if we look at, at the bigger development uh, infrastructure, we have the developer sitting at her computer mm. uh, uh, co developing, and then we have like a production server, we have some kind of staging servers, mm -hmm. everything needs to be in sync, otherwise we will get the same kind of problems here with versions and things like that. But but it's a pretty much a, a controlled environment, at least. Uh, oh, my computer is going to sleep, so we should move on. Okay, so first of all, let's just create a simple web server in Node, and we have the code here. We're using a built-in module called yeah. HTTP. Uh, no need to, to download or anything, it comes with uh, when we install Node. Um, just some boilerplate code, we are creating a server uh, uh, which will have a request and a response object. Uh, and, and those objects are the ones that we will... I mean, in, in the request we get things on the request. Information about the user browser, uh, sent in data, uh, which URL is is uh, is the browser trying to fetch and things like that, and the response is what we send back to mm -hmm. the the client. Uh, so in this case, uh, this is just a callback function, uh, uh, and we say that okay, we create a server. Uh, when we get the request, this function will be executed. Uh, we will on the uh, response object, set a header, tell tell the client that we are sending a text plane uh, mime type uh, of data, and we're just, in this case, sending a string back to the mm. to user and ending the request, making it so that the request will be sent to the client. Uh, of course, this should probably be valid HTML, but I mean, the browser is, is, is can handle, uh, handle even just text and just show it in the browser. Uh, and then we uh, uh, is basically configuring or, or telling uh, the server that it should listen on a specific port on this computer. Uh, and uh, when it's up and running, it will, in this case, just console log that the port is, uh, or, or the server is up and running. And that's it. Yeah. It's 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 a really simple thing. I mean, we can try this. I think I have it uh, as an example. So 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 this is just basically the code. I've just added it to JavaScript file. I have Node installed, and I do a node app.js, and we see that the server will start. And then we could go to the browser, refresh the browser, and the browser just says hello world. And we could probably look in the network. Let's make it bit bigger, could look in the network uh, network uh, tab, uh, reload the browser, and we can see that in this case uh, we are getting a response that is just plain text. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no index, oh, uh, there is no HTML element, no nothing, however the browser is uh, Actually, let's see if we look at elements. Yeah, we can see here that 
actually the browser will not be able to just present the text, it wants it in, in a valid HTML document, so it basically creates the simplest of, of mm. HTML documents for us. However, this is not how we are supposed to do it, just to show you that the simplest of, of, of web servers. Uh, in this case, if I do, do, can I do that? Do it like that instead. Um, if I try to 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 request another something else than root, hello, we will just get the same, the same. result. Yes. Whatever I write in the URL, the same result will always come back to us, and that's because in the code we're just telling that as soon as we get a request, just send this hello world back. So you can say that this application lacks of uh, some kind of routing, right? Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, in a web application, we want to be able to, 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 to point to a specific resource and get that resource and have different routes and, and URLs. Um, so that's the next step. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. We add some routing. Uh, and now it starts to be quite complicated, right? Yeah. Uh, it's... I mean, it's, 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 it's not really complicated because it's, it's quite simple code. Yes, but it's a simple example. Yeah, it's a really simple example. Let's see what we're doing. So we create the server just as, as we did before. Uh, we are constructing a regular expression. I think you have done that. I would not <laughs> want to try to, to like decrypt that one. Uh, and we do some kind of to lower case. But this part, the switch part, is pretty easy, so, so mm -hmm. I, I just Okay. hope that that regular expression don't have any bugs in it. Um, so we, we switch this path uh, um, and the path is we are basically taking the request object and the URL and we are trying to get rid of all of the things in the request and just look at, at the path that matters in the mm -hmm. URL. So filtering the server part and things like that or the, yeah, the server part in the URL. So we're switching that one. In case it's empty, then we're probably trying to reach index.html, the, yeah. the root. Uh, in that case, we're just telling uh, telling that, okay, so this is the home page, and then we break. Mm -hmm. If it's slash about, then we're showing an about page, yeah. just showing about. And in every other case, we're giving back a 404 mm -hmm. that this resource isn't found, isn't to be found. I haven't tried this one, but we could Oops. try it. <laughs> uh, let's see if the regular expression is correct. Uh, save that one. Uh, I probably need to restart the server since... Oh, I think I lost... Uh oh, let's do it like this. Let's get back to the server, listen. Ah, okay. We forgot one thing, that one. I removed it. Okay, so we still need to listen on the port. And then we need that one. Oops. Have you tried this one? I think so. <laughs> okay, yeah, now server is up and running. Uh, we go to 3000, it says home page. Great, got some kind of error. Oh, it's the fabric one, we can skip that one. It's probably adding that, I'm trying to request that one. So if I'm just writing something, we get a 404 back and we probably look in the network traffic, we see that we get the status code yeah. 404. And we should always communicate using status codes, uh, the HTTP. Uh, status codes. Well, what about about then? Uh, about, what about about? Well, yeah, 200. 200, about, and we get the about page. Um, the status is quite important, I think, uh, because if you coded up a, a page and uh, you reload the page and, and, and your client and, and you don't, uh, you doesn't get the result you expected, Take a look at the status. That might be what is it? Three or three, three or three or four, three or four, three, four five. Oh. That well, it has been cached in the browser, yeah. basically. Uh, you can disable cache. So, so when you develop, it could be a good thing so mm -hmm. that the browser haven't cached an old uh, request. Um, yeah. 
but in this case, it, often it works mm. as, as uh, expected. Uh, you could probably, uh, if we go into the headers on this request, we can see that, okay, so the requested uh, URL was this one, uh, and that was what your, probably your regular expression did was filter yeah. out that yeah. part. Uh, uh, no, to, to be more precise, it, it, it is replaced but with an empty string. Yeah, uh, the method is get, we got it 200 okay back, mm -hmm. uh, and then we could see that somewhere on the, maybe on the response, no, on the headers for the response, we should probably see that the content type is text plain as we, uh, we tell, told the browser. Um, we can also, I mean, if, if you want to know, of course you can log the request object in the browser, uh, on the server to mm. find out what you can expect to get from, from the client, but you can also see it in the request headers on the client side. So, so you would probably be able to like find the accept uh, in the request mm. object, for instance. Uh, simple, simple server. What's the problem with this one then? Uh, I mean, this is a really simple example. Uh, probably our web application will have a lot of more uh, routes. It mm -hmm. will probably have uh, more advanced uh, content to be, be rendered. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and just, this is just about discussing, we were just discussing the routing yeah, here. Yeah, only the simple thing is just depend, deciding where, what code to run when the user uh, specifies a specific URL. Uh, the complexi complexity will increase mm -hmm. rapidly, uh, and now it's time to, to introduce tools that makes this pro process quite a bit easier. Uh, and this is where frameworks come, come, come into the picture. And, and we often, when we, we discuss this kind of development environment, we're talking about a stack. Mm. Not a st memory stack inside of no. the computer, but, but not a kind of stack, a development stack. Um, and there are many stacks available for server-side uh, development. In, uh, on Apache, we often have PHP and some kind of uh, um, stack for that. Uh, what we are doing in this course is a full-stack JavaScript. Mm -hmm. um, um, the client will, of course, be written in JavaScript, uh, and even the server will uh, using uh, Node. Um, oh, that, that's what the full stack, I think, mean, right? Yeah, yeah. The same language on the client and the, same, and, and the server. Yeah, and we will not need to do this context switching that is uh, occurring when you are coding a PHP, for mm. instance, that you need to, to code in PHP and remember that syntax when you're on the server and on the same time when you're on the client, you need to context switch to JavaScript mm. and, 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 and the quirks in JavaScript. Um, sometimes that could be a good thing because you will always be sure where you are if you are on, yeah. on, on, on the server or on the client, especially maybe if you're unexperienced, could be a little bit I mean, you need to focus, okay, so the, the code that I'm writing, is it going to be executed on the server or on the client? That's, that's something that should be obvious to you at all times. So, so, mm -hmm. so you don't think that the code I'm writing right now is on the client. Uh, however, I think that the advantages in this case uh, um, out, outweighs the, the, the disadvantages. Uh, but in many cases, you, you might not have the, 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 the fortune to, to be able to show, choose your own stack. It will probably be, be a requested that you do this in an mm -hmm. environment. So the, the, the code should be running in our Microsoft Enterprise uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Then it's .NET probably that is yeah. what you will have to, to do on the server. Uh, there are many fancy words, LAMP, WAMP, uh, things like that to, to, to like uh, show off the stack. Uh, LAMP is a really uh, uh, common one. Uh, I think it's Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, yeah. right? Uh, and Wham WAMP Windows. is Windows, Apache, MySQL, mm. and PHP. So, so it tells you even which database, uh, uh, which database is in background. Uh, on 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 uh, in when it comes to JavaScript, mean is a pretty one, uh, pretty 
pretty common one. Uh, it says that, okay, so we have MongoDB, we have Express, the framework that we will discuss in this course. We're using Angular on the client side, so it's still mm -hmm. JavaScript, but it's yeah. the framework Angular. And then we have Node.js. Mm -hmm. uh, Pretty much we are trying to structure this so it will be a good abbreviation, I think. Oh, well, and Mern, that's, yeah, that, Mern. That's, that, that's React instead of Angular. Yeah. And, um, well, as we speak, there will be numerous new combination of, 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 uh, of different... Yeah. And, and in this course, we will use Mongo. Yeah. Uh, and we will use Express. We will use Node.js, so it's some kind of me, M E N stack. <laughs> then uh, the letter in the middle, uh, we will probably use vanilla, so it will be Mevn, <laughs> but vanilla JavaScript. But you're totally fine. I mean, if if you want to write a React client, fine. we will. Yeah, it's fine for us or Angular client or whatever. Um, we we don't look at the client code in this course. Not not well. A little bit since since in some of the assignments, but but uh, not to an extent. Um, okay, so it looks like they have a graphical uh, presentation of this uh, client HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Node.js as the application server. We will store data in the MongoDB document yep. database. Uh, we will get help from Express on on the server side mm -hmm. to help us structure things. Um, as I said, I mean, we're using Express. It's not a big, big part of the course. It's just what we are using to, mm. to show examples of how to, to structure your, your uh, server code. Uh, there are many other uh, JavaScript backend frameworks. Express is by far, I guess, the most popular one. I think so too. Uh, you will find Dozens and dozens of, of examples and, and videos on, on some of them well. is, are even based on Express. Yeah, yeah. So, so, some of those uh, frameworks uh, here, like Sales and Feathers, are, are, is based on Express. Uh, Express is is kind of this good multi tool. It mm -hmm. Works well in in many situations. However, if you are, have a really specific task, you want to create a web API, for instance, mm -hmm. you might choose something that is just right for that special mm. task, uh, like, I guess, Fastify or something mm. like that. Um, however, Express is, is, is the most popular one. You will find a lot of examples online. Uh, we will use Express in this course. We will use Express uh, version 4. Version 4, yes. Uh, and that could be a good thing if you're looking for examples. Be a little bit aware which uh, uh, version is being used mm. uh, at at the time of speaking. Version five is not here, so uh, but it will be uh, eventually. So there might be things that has changed, uh, mm. but but we are focusing on on version four. Uh, so this is what uh, uh, is. What Express is, is describing itself as, or the developers uh, are describing Express as a minimal and flexible Node.js web application framework. Mm. There are, of course, many that are more minimal uh, yes. and more flexible, mm. uh, but this one is a pretty good one. Um, and it should be easy to set up and configure. It's single threaded, and we have discussed that earlier on when we, we talked about Node.js, but it's 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 important to 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 have that in mind that if you are doing something that is calculation heavy, you will lock up the uh, the queue basically uh, and and stop other uh, requests from being handled. So 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 think a little bit about that. It's platform independent. Oh well, you can mm. run it on Linux and the Windows, yeah. I guess. So wherever you can write, run Node, you will be able to run Express as well. It says that it's inspired by Sinatra. Yes. What is that? Well, it's a framework for Ruby. Everything's... <laughs> well, I think uh, Ruby on Rails, uh, Rails is a framework you use when you're coding Ruby, when you're developing web application, and, and Ruby on Rails is, uh, well, 
it's the base for ASP.NET, for example, for Sinatra, for Express. Mm. And Ruby on Rails, I mean, it's it's not that big right now. It's always been this like yeah. uh, having a, a core of really mm. uh, loyal developers. <laughs> yeah. However, it's never like bloomed and no nope. gone really big. But but they have done a lot of important yes. work, uh, inspiring frameworks like Express. Uh, we will uh, talk about the term middleware a lot. Mm. Uh, it's one of the key concepts in uh, Express. Uh, being able to, to like, what, could we, what should we say, I inject, yeah. inject, yeah. being able to, to, to listen in a chain or, uh, yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm really not sure how to describe middleware, but we will, we will show some examples of that. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's dive into a minimal express website then. I will not show this as examples. We will, as I said, have a separate mm. uh, example soon where we will look at it instead. But it's pretty simple. You can, uh, you need to, to uh, uh, add express to, well, well, to, to your... To start with, we can say that this is the... Ex the exact example we used previous. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, yeah. It's the basically the same thing mm. that the, the the last one with the switch yeah. uh, statement. But but in this case, you can see that it's uh, pretty simple. So so we are using the module Express. We need mm. to add that to our dependencies. Uh, I guess mm. uh, we uh, create an app by just calling Express like that. And then we have middlewares that are listening for uh, get requests, post mm -hmm. requests, different requests. In this case, we are listening for get requests. Uh, when we get a request to this path without doing all of the uh, regular, regular expressions, expressions and things, mm -hmm. take, takes care of that. As soon as we get a request to that path, uh, this callback function will be executed. We are sending something back with a response, and mm -hmm. that is it. Then, if this is not executed, because this this will end the chain. Yep. Uh, it, when we do a response dot send, it will block the code from continuing or the other middlewares to mm -hmm. be 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 added. So it will not evaluate this one. It will just end the execution. However, if we don't go into the, the, the root of this one, we will look if, 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 if we are executing the about uh, URL and, and then we're doing this one. And yeah, that is more or less it. And you can see that we'll, we, we kind of do the same thing mm -hmm. as with HTTP, that we need to listen on a port. And as soon as we, we will listen, we will log that we are listening on this port and we are mm. choosing port 3000 in this case it no, doesn't ca matter no, but well, in this case we don't need to to write that much code uh, as the previous example no. even if that one was a short one uh, well the, the framework take care of everything else yeah the 404 for instance because yeah. we have no 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 code for 404 in this case uh, and the framework will mm. will help us with that however we don't we will... need to set headers or no. so yeah for example exactly so, so this one is equivalent to, oh, where are we? To that one. Yeah. Yep. Um, and when, when, when we are writing bigger applications, we will um, take advantage of, of the framework. There are always disadvantages with frameworks as well. You need to learn the framework. Yep. Uh, uh, and you will be dependent on on the developers of the framework to get new functionality. There are things like that to consider mm. when using a framework, as, of course. So, so, so yes, taking the most obscure <laughs> framework and adding it to production might not be a good thing. However, Express is, is, is so widely used, so, so it shouldn't be a problem right now. Uh, okay, so we will start discussing a bigger example to show off what 
we could be able to do in a typical or how mm. we should structure a typical express application. Yeah. Uh, it will be a really simple case of the user writing something in an input field and clicking send. We will get a round trip to the server, so the data will be posted to the server. The server will take care of the data, maybe evaluate the data in some way. We will not. And then it will generate a new view with some text. In this case, welcome Ellen. It's a wonderful Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will need to, to find out which day it is on the week, and we need mm -hmm. to process the data from the client. Yep. Uh, a pretty simple example. Of course, we could do this in client-side JavaScript. There is no need in this example no. to make a round trip to the server. However, as, as, as we go on, we would probably want to maybe save this name mm -hmm. in a database or, or something like that, and then we need a server. Uh, so we will do this by structuring and using a common pattern called a model view controller. Oh, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> what would you call it? Would you call it like model view whatever or oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> there are too too many ways of structuring but this is this is a really common common way of structuring yeah. a web application uh, so we have the client up here making a request to the server and the first thing we will do is to 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 look at the routes and we have seen that and, and depending on the route instead of executing all of the code in together with the route routing code, which will get messy mm. in the end when we get a lot of code, we will make a controller that takes care of, of that for us. It would be, maybe it's important to say something about the controllers here. here. That's not a part of the Express framework at all. It's something we invented. Yeah. We yeah. invented. Yeah. And, um, well, the most important thing is it's not a part of the framework. Yeah. However, yeah. routes is and views is, but not the control. And model, I would no. say. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so the controller is basically the logic, the, the code that, that, that does something on the server. In this case, we have crossed over the model and the database, mm -hmm. but often the, we, we fetch data from the model and from the database and, and does something with that, uh, that data or, or yet Put, put, put data in the database, but, but we will skip that step in this case. Uh, uh, the controller will use uh, the view a template mm -hmm. uh, to, to render the view that will be sent back as an HTTP response to the client. I mean, it, it will, will be really hard for us in every request to, to create like a complete HTML mm -hmm. document in, in, in some kind of string and trying to, to, to handle that, so we will take take use of, of views and uh, the built-in or uh, template engines to do that for us. And we will show you that as well. So uh, this is, I guess, a pretty important slide. Well, it's the final one. Yeah. But not. <laughs> <laughs> it's the final directory structure when we're, when we're ready with, with everything. When, when we find controllers, we find uh, routes, we find views, and so on. And uh, well, and structure is everything, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, naming different folders, different files in the right way is very, very important yeah. because. There will be a lot of files. Yeah. Uh, this is a, bear in mind, this is a really simple example. It's, mm. it's yeah, like we have one controller, one view, and that's yeah. it. But I mean, this will grow really fast. And, and, if, and if you're not structuring your, your files in a good way, you will get in trouble. Uh, mm. that, that's for sure. It will yeah. be really hard to, to like interpret what is happening in your application. Um, I'm actually not sure in the course if we have a requirement. We ha I don't think we have a requirement that it must look like this example. Okay. However, <laughs> it should be structured. Mm. Definitely. It, it, yeah. And it mm -hmm. should be structured in a way that you can like speak for. So so if you 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 structure your code in any other way than this, be prepared to like explain why you did how you did. 
There are, I mean, this is just one way of structuring yeah. uh, all the files. There are many more, and you can read. I think even if you if you click this one, I think there is a GitHub repository, right? I don't remember. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, where you can like see different kinds of ways of structuring mm. the, the model view controllerish oh, uh, yeah. pattern. Uh, we choose this one. Uh, and all our examples will be based on this architecture yep. or this this structure, um, and and I think I we recommend you doing the same thing if you don't have a really mm. good uh, reason why mm. not doing that. So the, all the controls goes into a controller directory. All the views in the view directory. All the well, whatever. Yeah. So it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So, so go with this one. So I guess. Yeah. So first of all, we, we have a lot of dependencies. So I said that we need to install Express. Express mm. is not a part of of uh, Node in any way. Well, it's one part one part of the of the course is to is to create your own yep. package JSON. Yep. So this is this slide is slightly important too. Yeah, and we will do that in our example, but basically mm. you do an npm init and, and it will create a boilerplate package JSON mm. for you, and then you can go in and modify it for your needs. And, and we should have a li little look at this one right now. So we have some kind of name for this application and a description. We have a main telling where is the starting point of this mm. application. We tend to use app.js always. Yeah. Um, of course, in some examples you will see index.js, I yeah. guess, but we will go with app.js. Uh, we created a few scripts. Uh, it's really neat with npm that you can create your own uh, bash scripts that mm -hmm. will be executed when you, for instance, run npm start. And, and that is a basic rule. We should always be able to start your application using npm start. Mm -hmm. So at least you will need this one uh, start instead of writing node dot slash app dot js we should be able to just write npm start and it will be mapped like this then we have a dev start that will probably set up nodemon so that we will get to that nodemon is one of the the, the dependencies uh, and it will help us so that we don't need to to manually uh, cut down the server and restart it every mm. time we make a change nodemon will listen for changes in the file and restart the server for us yeah uh, so that's a pretty neat one. Uh, we have some linting to be able to mm. to, to, to catch errors in the uh, if we're not complying with the, the the code standard in the course. Some kind of author you choose MIT license, uh, and then we have the dependencies and the dep dependencies. And we have talked about this, but the dependencies is what is going to be pushed to production as well. So, mm. so in production we need those dependencies for the application to run and the dev dependencies is just for, for development process. Um, Nodemon, Snazzy and Standard are the ones that we are using for uh, for the development uh, environment and Nodemon, as I said, is the, the ability to start a server with a, uh, and having that auto reload. Uh, the Dependencies, we're of course using Express. In this case, we are using version 4.17.1, and we have mm. this what's it called? Roof symbol uh, in English. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, roof at least. Call it roof. Indicating that we accept smaller changes to this yeah. uh, this version, no major changes. So, so, so we will not allow this application to run on uh, Express 5, for instance. Nope. Uh, we are using Express HBS handlebars. Yeah, that's uh, the template engine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are many template engines, uh, many handlebar template engines. Mm -hmm. uh, not sure why we chose this one. Guess it has to do with like how many that's stars on GitHub <laughs> or or the, the, something the, like that. Yeah, <laughs> the, the community behind, and that is all, always important when you're looking for modules that. Try to investigate, is this a, a module that is actively updated? Does it get security patches? Uh, are there community around the module? Or is it just something mm. that some uh, someone developed years ago? It, it hasn't been ma maintained since. Moment manages dates. Dates could be 
a oh. little bit of yeah. hazard in yeah. JavaScript, Definitely. and this uh, package helps you do that, mm -hmm. I guess. It's Matt that has done this example, so that's why I'm telling that he has done. Uh, Morgan, HTTP request logger, I haven't used it. You have? Yeah. Well, I think we have to, to look at it when we're working with the example. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Moment uh, and Morgan, of course, is not necessary for the assignment but, but or this example, but it would make things easier. No demand not required uh, either, but I would recommend it. Okay. Uh, yeah, we could just look in the bottom as well. We have a no demand config, and this is we, w default no demand is listening for what? JavaScript yeah, files I and JSON so. files being JSON. changed. Yeah. Not HBH, HBS files. No. For example, HTML and CSS. So no. when we change those kind of files, uh, no demand will automatically restart the application. Mm, yeah. Uh, and then we will, oh, now, now it's a lot of little code, but we will look in the uh, app.js. Uh, mm. And and this, the app.js, you should see that as the entry point of your application. You should avoid putting a lot of logic and things mm. like that in, in app.js. We want to like try to remove as many things as possible for from app.js, but, but in app.js we will, kind of want to get a, a big picture of how is the application orchestrated. Mm. Uh, it's so small that I can <laughs> barely see, but in this case, I think we will actually go through this when we look at some other slides, right? Oh, I don't know, well, to be frank. But, but we start with, with all the requirements and the view engine setup and some, some additional middlewares, and then we got comes to the routes and, and catch the 404 because we don't want uh, the standard Express 404, we want a custom one. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, if anything goes wrong, we finish up with the error handler. No. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so it's. And well, well we st of course, we start listening on, 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 yeah. on, on, on a port. Yeah. But it. What to remember in the app.js is that order matters yeah, in this case definitely. a lot. Mm. You, you need to like set up your routes before you do the 404. Mm. Because if you if you do the 404 before the routes, the 404 will catch them all. Yeah. So so it would just say that okay, nothing is found. So so start off with the routes, go to the 404, and uh, in, in the last case, if if something is throwing an error inside of the application. Uh, catch the error, mm. and and it's pretty much a boilerplate code that you can copy from this project to yeah. the next project. Uh, so we can start off with the routing. Uh, still a bit small, but uh, hopefully you can see what we are doing. Uh, in this case, we we don't want all of our routes to be uh, be. In this case, we don't want all of the routes being placed in app.js because not. it will grow quite yeah. substantial. We want to, to like just have the, 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 the upper most important routes defined in app.js and then we can, can handle the routes in separate files. Mm -hmm. And if we look at this one, it says, oh, it says app.use slash. And in that case, require.routes. So we go to the route folder and we have a, a, a file named home router. Mm -hmm. So everything that is for the slash uh, route will go to home router. And we can look in that one because it's it's this one. Uh, in the home router, uh, we are still needing to declare and use express and router. Uh, and we will uh, acquire a controller mm -hmm. because we need to do something when we get a request to this route, we need to uh, to call a controller. Oh, well, we can, we can say uh, uh, that uh, it's quite common you write your your logic in, this in the file, routes, in the routes, yeah. but we we uh, refactored the code from the routes to the controller. Yeah. Why did we do that? Much more, uh, much simpler, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Uh, more files, but better structure. Yeah, uh, easier to maintain, easier yeah. to test, and yeah. 
Is this, I mean, you have written a lot of .NET applications, for instance. Is this kind of the same pattern as you're using in .NET? Kind of the same pattern. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, okay. So, uh, and then now the neat thing is that since we, every, everything in this file now, or every, every routing we do in this file is uh, relative to the, to the route that we specified in the app.js. Yeah. Yes. So in this case, it says that if we get, get to the home route, we will call the controller and we will call a method called index. Yeah. And if we get a post to this uh, URL, we will call the controller and we will call a method called index mm -hmm. post. Why is that one called index and that one index post? Shouldn't that one be called index get? Well, most often you you, you get a page. And uh, when you use the ver verb get, it's common that you just name the, the function like index. Yep. But uh, in this case, when we're using JavaScript, we don't. Uh, have uh, a signature in the same way in, in C sharps in, as in, in Java, for example. We need to, to use a suffix, in this case post, mm. uh, as in the, the verb of the request. Yep. And as uh, we see here, if we go to, oh, we didn't have a, a home route, but if we were to in, in app uh, dot, uh, JS, uh, if we were to have a uh, slash home, for instance, mm. and we will route that to ho home router, it will be the same kind of thing. We, we would not need to specify home nope. uh, in this file. We could just like, mm. it's relative to the route that is specified in app.js. Uh, so we basically build up our routes by, by different files for each scenario or yeah. each um, URL. Okay, going to the controller. So remember the router is, is just forwarding to the controller. Uh, in this case we're using a moment and that is for the dates. Mm -hmm. uh, we are creating a controller object. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the index uh, index uh, uh, method mm -hmm. that we were calling on the, on the get and in this case it will not do much it will just render uh, a, a view yeah. and, uh, and, uh, a view called home uh, slash index yeah and we find that in the view folder we find it in the, yes, in, the, in the view folder we will find a home folder and in the home folder, folder we will find file index.hbs yeah and um, we can see the, the importance of, of, of structuring and naming things the same thing mm. uh, all the way so that the controller is named the same thing as the view, for instance, in, that case. in this case. Uh, then we have the post. It's handled in index post, as we saw. Uh, in, this case we're, in this case, we're doing a little bit more mm -hmm. because the view, in the case we're posting data, so we're writing ln in the, in the text field and and submitting the data to the client, and we will get that in the request. When we are rendering the view, we, we will take this name and we will use that in the in, in, in the view. We will also need to add the date or the, 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 the weekday uh, <coughs> in the view. Uh, and we discussed this earlier. Uh, uh, so what we are doing in this case is that in the controller we are preparing the view. Yeah. Well, we're, we're preparing the view data. Yeah, the view uh, data. The data we will send to the view. Yeah. And, uh, well, I think it's quite important that we try to prepare the data as much as we can before we send it to the, to the view. Because if we need to, to write much too much logic in, in our views, well, that's not a, a good mm. thing to do. Mm. So, so doing things like that, c c we know that we want to write Tuesday, for instance. Mm. Then we uh, we we find the day name here and we format it as as, as we would like yeah. it in the view. How 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 far do you go? Do you, do you like if if we want the the day to be presented in all up 
uppercase letters. Is that something we should do in the view data, or is well, that... That that's depends on the template engine, I think. Yep. If it's too complicated to do in the template engine, uh, I think it, it should be done in the controller in, in this case. But, yep. but uh, if it's easy to do uh, in a nice way in the view template, uh, well, feel free to do it then. Yep. Uh, we are creating just an object with the data, the view data we want to see send to, 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 to the view. And then we are calling render and render will uh, 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 know that we have a view engine uh, connected. Mm -hmm. uh, it will look for the view that is called home slash index dot HPS and it will call that view and send in the view data as an object. And you don't need to do it as an object, but it's preferable to, to send the yeah. view data inside of another object. So it's yeah. basically a, an object inside of an object. Yeah. Uh, we will see why when we, when we get to the view. Uh, and in this case, we're just uh, exporting this home controller. We're using require, but we haven't said that, but we're using require module.exports. Mm. So, so the, the, the common... Uh, uh, common JS yes. module system. Somewhere in the future, maybe when you look at this, this will have been replaced with ECMAScript modules. Mm. But but right right now we are using uh, Common JS. Uh, okay, so let's go to the view, I guess. Uh, so looking at the view, uh, then it looks like this. Uh, so we have the index.hps for handlebars. We will be using. Uh, uh, a template engine called handlebars. Mm -hmm. uh, it's some kind of related with mustache, mustache, yes. I guess. Uh, the reason why it's called mustache is probably that when you write this kind of template code, you will use a lot of curly brackets mm -hmm. and they look kind of like mustaches. There are many template engines. Uh, you can use Pug, you can use EJS, there are uh, a ton of, of, of. Yeah. Why did we choose HPS as the most common one? Or <laughs> To be frank, I, I don't remember, but, 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 uh, but, but, but it, it's common enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we will not look like in detail on, on how, how this handlebar view engine works, but you can do things like simple logic. You can, for instance, if we send in a view data in form of an array, you can iterate that array mm. and, and, and create HTML for each and every object in the array or something like that. Uh, we can have a look at an example. In this case, we can first off see that we don't have an HTML element, we don't have a body element, we don't have a head element. No. We have only like the code that is used to present more or less the body of, of, yeah. of this uh, uh, HTML. Uh, so it says, hi, I'm an express application. What's your name? We see the form with the action slash. So we wanted to post this to the root of mm -hmm. the application. Uh, we will use method post when we send something. We have a simple input uh, input uh, field with the name name, and that name correlates to in the controller when we got from the request object, we filtered out request dot body yeah. dot name, yeah. uh, and that is the parameter that was sent from that form. Um, we have an input type submit that will send this to uh, the server. And then if we have some view mm -hmm. data, because this, remember, this view will be called on gets and yeah, posts. Yeah. The difference is if we are doing a get, we don't have any view data. So it's, we can test if, if we have view data, then we will show a text. If we don't have view data, this is probably a get, mm -hmm. then we will skip this part. But if we have view data, if it's, this view is rendered with a post, uh, we write a p and then we write this double uh, brackets uh, view data name and then this is why we we remember the curly brackets in this case has nothing to do with objects it's, yep. it's, it's just just a way of expressing that we want template code to be executed mm. in, in this context or in the view uh, so we say that okay, get the view data object dot name, mm -hmm. and if we haven't, 
if we we wouldn't have those curly uh, if we weren't to to incorporate this view data object inside of another object we could have written name right here yep uh, instead but that's not a good practice because in in, in later on we later could on get we'll... collisions yep. uh, on the names so 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 use this practice uh, add your data inside of an object in this case view data so view data dot name will be placed here and view data dot today name in mm. the end. it's pretty obvious what this does um, please have a look the difference between using two and three curly brackets or yeah. some some security uh, issue concerns to mm. consider but I think we will get back to that actually. Yeah. Um, we can look in this one. This is the rendered code on the on the client side. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is basically what is being sent to the client. Uh, the blue part comes from somewhere else. Well, the, the layout. Yeah. Uh, and maybe we didn't... We will get to that. Oh, maybe. Well, let's see. But it comes from separate files in the, mm. in the, in the view folder yep. uh, called layout in this case. Uh, and that was what we were setting up in the app.js. We mm. set up how, where are our view, view layouts located. And, and the, the white part here in the middle is what's being generated from this view. Uh, and LNU and Monday is the two parameters that were sent to the view. Yeah, name and day name. Yeah. That's this is pretty much it. Now yeah. now we've created like a really simple simple um, express application. So okay, let's look at the, how how we set up the view engine in the app.js. So so the view engine uh, in this case will we focus on this one the view uh, folder. Uh, we install express handlebars. Yep. Uh, we need to install it uh, without the dev, uh, save dev flag. Since and then there are many kinds of different different kinds of handlebars, template engines, and uh, this setup uh, will work just for express yep. HPS. Yep. And then we need to set up the, the template engine as well. Uh, we require the express HPS. This is in app.js. Uh, we tell uh, our application that we want to use an engine, a mm -hmm. view engine, uh, in this case HPS, and uh, it will be this HPS.express4. So, so, so I guess you can use HPS for different versions of Express. Yeah. So, uh, in this case, we are doing using it for Express4, and then we could configure it by sending in an object to this one. Uh, we are telling that the default layout in this case is found in the views folder. Uh, layout folder and it's called default in mm. this case. We can see that in the view folder we have layouts and we have a default.hps. So we are mm. just telling the view engine that this is the default uh, uh, layout. If we were to look in that one, I don't think we can because I don't think we have that code ready. But if we were to look in that one, we could see that this is where you will find things like mm. the yeah, maybe on the uh, next slide. Yeah, yeah. things like the the index.html, uh, the the HTML elements, the body elements, head, meta elements, and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, there are some parts that are, that are grayed out, and that is, I guess, because we're not using the, them in this example. example. But of but course, they are, they are useful. Yeah, you can have more layouts. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a default layout, but but maybe different pages want a slightly different layout. Maybe the start page wants one layout and the rest want another layout. Mm -hmm. um, you can do that. You're just telling that we have a layout directory uh, and it's just points to that directory basically. And we have something called partials. We will probably look at that later on as well. But well, uh, headers and footers yeah. may be shareable between different kind of layouts and uh, we can specify those parts and Oh, and the partials directory. Yep. Uh, then we are once again telling that use this HPS as the view engine, and uh, we the views are being found in in that uh, template uh, that uh, directory. When all of this is set up, we'll look well, something like this. Yeah. This is kind of what is happening. We have the template engine. It will. Use uh, the controller basically will set up a view data object and send that to the template engine that will combine that with the index.hps 
uh, and the, the layouts of the default layout. And here you can see how that default layout is, is, is constructed. In, inside of the body, it just says free brackets body. And this is where this yellow box will be inserted and generated to the client mm -hmm. will be our full HTML page. And now you can see advantages like, okay, I want a menu on every page. Okay, then you can create a partial or you maybe place it in, inside of the layout mm -hmm. because you want the same menu everywhere or something like that. And you can do that. Um, a really simple example. We will code it from the start to the end mm -hmm. as, as, as a demo as well. Uh, but there are more things to do, of course. We, oh. we skipped the model part, we skipped storing data, yeah. which is often a, a really important part of, of uh, creating applications. We mm -hmm. will look at creating CRUD applications in this course. Yep. Create, read, update, delete. Typical, typical web applications, a member mm -hmm. registry or something like that, where you can add members, remove members, update members, for instance, or posts or whatever. We will also look at, because the advantage of having a server is that we can, can uh, start to include some kind of uh, security in form mm. of uh, authentication and uh, authorization, being able to authenticate users, being able to authorize different users for different resources in the application. We will look at that as well. Uh, to be able to get that to work, we need some kind of session handling uh, to be able to mm. know that the client is the same client that just logged in, for instance. We'll look at something that is flash messages. It's nothing to do with Adobe Flash, but it's, it's like presenting messages to the user what is happening in the application. We will look at that as well. But I next, for the next, next part in the course, we will focus mm. on persistent data. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's it. Yeah, we'll see you then.